Hi, fifth graders, it's Mrs. Lamorne again, and today we're going to be doing Unit 4, Lesson 9, The Birds. So we're going to solve multiplication problems. What do you notice? What do you wonder? Wow, I like this picture because I really like birds. I love to sit on my front porch and watch birds. So what I notice is that there are two birds in this picture and only one birdhouse. I do notice that. One of the birds is flying and the other that I noticed that the house is kind of tilted. I don't know if they like it that way. Maybe they do. Um, I wonder if there's a nest inside the house. I wonder who put that house on there crooked like that. And I see some nails sticking up at the top and on the bottom and on the side over here. I wonder if that's safe. So I have some wonderings about that for the birds. And I wonder if both birds live in the house or just one. Okay. How would you describe the shape of that bird house? Well, it looks like the sides are rectangles. Sides are rectangles. Yeah. Looks like the bottom might be a rectangle too. I think from unit one, it looks like a rectangular, rectangular prism. I almost said that it looked like a cube, but I know that a cube has to have all equal sides. And this side looks really long, whereas the bottom looks really short, right? It looks like it's longer. The sides are longer than the width of the bottom. So it doesn't have equal sides. All right. I wonder if we're going to be doing a lot of work with volume. Oh, yes, we are. What do you notice and what do you wonder about this table? What do you notice and what do you wonder? Oh, I noticed that there are lots of different kinds of birds right here. There's a chickadee. I have Carolina chickadees in my yard. Wood ducks. We have a barn owl. We have a red-headed woodpecker at my house. And bluebirds and swallows. We have almost all of these at our house. So I noticed that, first of all, because I'm very interested in birds. Um, I noticed that the side lengths of the floor yeah, are smaller. They're different for the, the height, right? I wonder what those numbers mean. Do smaller birds have smaller houses? So look, this one's a 10 by 18, right? But this one's only a four by four for the chickadee. I know that chickadees are really tiny and that barn owls gets a big one, right? And the wood duck gets a big one. So these must be bigger birds. So that's what I notice. Okay, let's see what they're gonna have us do. There we go. <clears throat> different types of birds use different types of houses. This table gives you the recommended side lengths for bird houses of various species. Estimate, estimate the possible value, volume for each bird house. Be prepared to explain your reasoning. So to estimate, I don't have to find um, exact numbers, do I? Estimate, remember, means easy. So I can make the problems really easy if I want to. Okay, so how am I going to do this? How are we going to find the volume? All right, so I think what I could do is I could find the area of the floor. So I have the side lengths of the floor, right? So I could find the area of the floor and then multiply it times the height, and then that would give me the volume. Because I remember from unit one that volume is going to equal the length times width times height, or the area of the base, that would be the floor, right? The area of the base times the height. So I have the side lengths of the floor and I have the height. So the area of this floor is gonna be four times four, it's gonna be 16 square inches. So I can multiply this and because, because I am estimating, I can make it easy. I don't wanna do 16 times six or seven or eight or nine, but I could do 16 times 10 really easily in my head. So I think the volume is going to be 160 um, cubic inches. So see what I mean by making estimation easy? I'm not going to worry about these. I want to do something really easy. Oh, and here's another 10. So I can multiply 10 times 18 really quickly and get 180 square inches. 
that's the area of the floor of my birdhouse. And then I'm going to multiply 180 times 10, and that's going to give me 1,800 cubic inches because I can estimate. I can make my life easy, right? Awesome. Okay, again, the barn owl is going to get the same amount, 180. Ooh, in this one, um, they don't give me a 10. It's anywhere from 15 to 18, right? 15 to 18. So that is going to mean I'm going to have to do a little bit of math on the side. So I can do 180 times what would be the easiest, maybe 15. 5 times 0, 5 times 8, carry this 0. 5 times 1 plus 1 is 900. And then I know that I'm going to be 10, and 1 times all of that is going to be 180. So 0, 0, 7, I'm going to say 2,700, 2,700 cubic inches. All right. 6 times 6 is 36 square inches, and then I'm going to have to multiply it times one of these, right? So 6 times 6 times 12. So let's do 36 times 12. Well, I already know that's going to be 12, 6, 7. I'm going to do 10 times 6 is 6 and 3. 2, 13, and 432 cubic inches. All right. We're getting through this, right? Oh, between 6 and 10, there is a, at 6 and 12, there is a 10. So I'm going to use 10 for this one. And I know this is going to be 25. 5 times 5 is 25. Times 10 is going to be 250 cubic inches. Okay, another 36. Um, did I do a 36 already? I did a 36 times 12 already. That doesn't help me, does it? So let's do 36 times 6. 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times 3 is 18, 19, 20, 21. 216 cubic, oh, I forgot to put inches up here, inches. All right, messy work, but it is done. Okay, let's see what they ask us to do next time. How did you estimate the volume of the house of the, for the wood duck? Well, for the wood duck, I just did 10 by 18. 10 times 18 is 180, and then I multiplied that times 10 which would give me the 1,800. It was really easy to do that one. The red-headed woodpecker was six by six, and then I had to multiply that by, uh, I got to choose a number between 12 and 15, and I chose 12. So I got, um, you saw what I got for that one. Which numbers are the friendliest for estimating products? Well, any power of 10, right? Anything that ends in zero are the easiest numbers to work with. All right. Use the criteria from the table to determine the recommended range for the volumes of each type of birdhouse. The recommended range. So I'm going to have to find the area of the floor again, right? Find the area of the floor. So that's going to be 16, 180, 180, 36. 25 and 36. So I multiplied the length times the width of the bottom of the floor of the birdhouse, and that's how I got these square, and they're all square inches, but I'm not going to write that right now. So to do the range, I'm going to have to do 16 times 6, and then I'm going to have to do 16 times 10. So the top of the range is going to be 16 times 10, which is 160 cubic inches. So the top of the, the, that's the top of the range. The bottom of the range is going to be 16 times 6, right? Because remember, again, I'm doing area of the base times the height will give me the volume. All right. So I already know that. Um, let's do 16 times 6. So I'm going to show that over here. 16 times 6. 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 3 is 9. So this is going to be anywhere from 96 to 160 cubic inches. 
All right, for this one, I have 180, and I know that the bottom of the range is going to be times 10, 1,800 for that. So now I have to do 180 times 24. So this is what I'm doing. I'm multiplying it times 6, and I'm multiplying it times 10. So 96 to 160. Now I'm going to do 1,800. Now I have to multiply it times 24. So 180, 80, what's the line? Times 24. 4 times 0 is 0. 4 times 8 is 32. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 3 is 7. I'm done with the 4 and the 3. Remember, I have to add a 0 because I'm doing 20 times 0 is 0. 2 times 8 is 16. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. 7 plus 6 is 13, 3 plus 1 is 4. So the range for this one is going to be 4,320 cubic inches. Okay. All right, now I'm going to have to do 180 again times 15. 5 times 0 is 0. 5 times 8 is 40, 5 times 1 is 5, plus 4 is 9. Add my 10, 10 times 0 is 10, 10 times 0, 10 times 8 is going to be 8, is that right? Oh, I got to put a 0 there, don't I? So I forgot that, right? 1 times 0 is 0, 1 times 8 is 8, 1 times 1 is 1. So we're going to add that up, 0, 0, that's 17, and 2. So this is going to be 2,702. Now I have to do 180 times 18. That's going to be 0. 8 times 8 is 64. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 6 is 14. I'm going to have to add my 0. One time, and this is going to be 180, right? 180, and then add it, because 1 times all of that. 0, 4, 12, 3. So here we go, 3,240 cubic inches. All right, we're getting some work done here. Now I have 36. The area of the floor is 36, and I'm going to multiply that times 12. Feel like I did that already, but we're gonna do it again. <laughs> 12. 2 times 6 is 12. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. I'm gonna mark that out and mark that out. Make sure I put a 0 in the 1's place. 1 times 6 is 6. 1 times 3 is 3. 2, 13, and 4. So we have, our small range is 432. And the top of our range, we're going to have to do 36 times 15. All right, 36. We sure are getting some practice with our multiplication, right? 5 times 6 is 30. 5 times 3 is 15. 16, 17, 18. Add my 0, cross that out and that out. And then I know that 1 times 36 is going to be 36. 8 plus 6 is 14, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to do 540 cubic inches. Okay, four more. Now we're going to do 25 times 6. I, remember I can think about quarters. 25 times 6. Well, four quarters is a dollar, and then two more quarters, so I think that's going to be 150. 150. Love working with 25 because it's easy to figure that out. And then I can just double that because 12 is double 6. So if I double that, I think this is going to be 300 cubic inches. Let's see if I was right, right? 25 times 12, 2 times 5 is 10, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Bring down my 0, 5, and 2, 0, Look at that. I was right. I just did this, and then I doubled it because 6 is double of 12. Very good. Okay, 
last ones. I'm running out of room here. I think they'll fit over here. So now I have to do 36 times 6. Oh, I already did that. That's 150. Yay. Not going to rework it. Now I have to do 36 times 8. 36 times 8. 6 times 8 is 48. 8 times 3 is 24. Plus 4 is 28. 288 cubic inches. All right. So we have to be careful not to make mistakes, but, and it was a lot of work, but look what we did. We did it. We got through it. Good job. All right, let's see what is next. How did you find the recommended volumes of the Bluebird house? Well, we found the area of the bottom or the base, the area of the floor of the birdhouse, and then we multiplied it times the two recommended range numbers, right? And then we got those products. How did you find the recommended value value, ugh, value of the wood duck? We did the same thing, didn't we? We did the same thing. All right. Today we use different strategies to solve multiplication problems. When is it most helpful to use the standard algorithm? I like to use it when the numbers are complicated. I always like to use it because it is reliable and I know how it works. Take a minute to look, to think about which of these problems you would use the standard rig algorithm to solve, then share your strategy with your partner. All right, so let's think about each one of these, because different problems call for different strategies. I would probably not use the standard algorithm for this one, because I can think about this in my head. Two times two is four, and then I have one, two, three zeros, right? Tens, hundreds, thousands tens, hundreds, thousands. I don't know if I would use the standard algorithm for this one because I could do 6 times 40 is 240, and then 6 times 5 is 30, so I could just add those in my head and do 270. But for a problem like this one, I would probably need to use the standard algorithm because I can't hold all those numbers and their place values in my head. So I'm going to make sure that I line everything up with the place values and then multiply, right? That way, I'm not making any mistakes and I'm not forgetting anything. So 7 times 4 is 28, plus 2 is 30. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 3 is 10. And then we can cross those out, right? I'm going to do, this is 60 times 3, so I'm going to have to make sure that I have that there. And 6 times 3 is 18. 6 times 4 is 24, plus 1 is 25, 25, got to make sure that's right, and 6 times 1 is 6, plus 2 is 8. Now I can add them together, and I can do it, but I don't think that I would not, I would have to use this algorithm to find the answer to this problem. I would probably use the algorithm for 125 times 9 as well, just so that I don't make sure. I make sure that I'm not messing up when I um, add those carryover numbers, right? 18 plus 4, that would be 22, 9, 10, 11. So that would be really hard for me to think about in my head. Maybe you can, but the ones that I wouldn't use a standard algorithm are these two, and I would use one for the bottom two. All right, here's our cool down, our last problem of the day for lesson nine. To make a birdhouse for a screech owl, the recommended area of the floor is eight by eight. So that area of the floor would be eight times eight, eight inches, let's rewrite that. Eight inches times eight inches gives me 64 square inches. Or you could write that 64 inches and put a 2 there, that's squared. The recommended height is between 12 and 15 inches. So I'm going to have to do 64 times 12 and 64 times 15, right? Because I'm, excuse me, I want the recommended in inches, the range. They want the range of volumes. 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 6 is 12. I'm done with the 2, 
And remember that this is 10 times 4, so I'm going to have to add a 0. 10 times 4 is 40. 1 times 6 is 6. 6 and 7. So the smallest volume is 768 2, and then we have to do times 15. 5 times 4 is 20. 5 times 6 is 30, plus 2 is 32. And then that means 10 times 4 is 40. And 1 times 6 is 6. 0 plus 0, 4 plus 2 is 6, 3 plus 6 is 9. So the recommended range for the screech owl is 768 to 960 cubic inches. We could also write that as 768 to 960 inches cubed. That three means cubed. All right. Good job, boys and girls. I will see you again in lesson 10. Thank you very much for working with me today.